In this lesson, we'll examine the code in your first app, and you'll make your first Android code modifications and test them on your virtual device. So please pause the course, then bring up Eclipse with your workspace and first app as you see I've done. What you'll see as we go through your first app is the basic constructs of an Android application. Larger and more complex apps will, of course, use more classes, methods, and resources than you have in your first simple app. However, your first app contains elements that are common to all apps, and this will give you a good grounding for moving forward. It should also help with your confidence as we progress into more Android detail. You'll have created, understood, and modified your first Android app, and the first of anything is usually the most difficult. So let's begin by looking at the main Java file for your app. Follow along with me in Eclipse on your computer, as we're going to have you make some changes to your code. This will give you hands-on time with your app, help you navigate through its components, and give you confidence in making changes. Open the Java file located in the source folder. The source folder contains the Java source files for your apps. In our app, there's one main activity, and let's look at it in the center window. The Java code is the program code that makes your app do things, such as changing screens, interacting with the user, and drawing maps. This is as opposed to the XML code that formats your screens to look a certain way. This activity contains one class. It's a public Java class, as the main activity always needs to be, so as to be available to the Android system. It's named main activity, and it extends, or builds on, the Android class activity. The main activity is initiated when the app starts. Activity is the Android class that controls the life cycle of the code associated with your app activities. We'll delve more deeply into activities and life cycles in a future lesson. If you need to, this might be a good point at which to review the basics of Java classes and methods. So if you'd like to, pause this lesson and go back to the lesson on Java and the references it contains. After you've reviewed Java classes and methods, return back here. To access information on the activity class, notice that when I hover over activity, an explanation appears. And if I click on it, come down to the bottom and look in the Javadoc window, the explanation shows up here. And if I click on one of the links in the description, it brings up a web page from the Android website. Whether I use the hover window, the Javadoc window, or the web page, depends on how deeply I want to study the description. Now, this is a very convenient way to look at descriptions of Java and Android classes and methods. It's much, much easier than having to go to the Android website and look them up. Now, this is very important because, as I've said, object-oriented programming is all about reusing code in the form of classes and methods. So you'll be constantly checking to see exactly what they do. What I'll do during the course lessons is I discuss Java code is, at a minimum, hover over keywords to let the explanation window appear when there is one. If you'd like to take time to read the pop-up description, you can pause the course video playback. And if you'd like to read the full detailed Java doc or website explanation, you can bring up your Eclipse environment and use the code to access the explanations. In the lessons coming up shortly, we'll study the details of the Android classes and methods you're seeing here. We don't have time in this lesson to delve deeply into them. So for now, just try to get an overall lay of the land in your first app. The import statements are used to give the app access to packages containing the classes and methods needed in the app, such as the activity class. The package name is defined per the name we specified in the app setup wizard. Our main activity class has two methods on create and on create options menu. The first is an override of the on create method in the Android activity class. And we'll be examining the activity class in more detail in a coming lesson. It controls the life cycle of app programs on the mobile device. The override statement is a compile time indicator that the method is being overridden. This notifies the compiler to check for such things as proper method name spellings for the overriding method. The onCreate method 
passes the state of your program activity or saved instance state as a bundle to the activity class. And it uses the set content view method to establish the layout for our screen, specifying the activity main as the XML file that'll define the layout. Now, this sequence of statements from override to set content view is a standard sequence you'll use in your apps. You always need to override the onCreate method of the activity class, and you always need to use the set content view to tell the Android system to display your screen. The other method in our class overrides onCreate options menu in the activity class. It uses the get menu inflator method to add items to the action bar if it's present, specifying the activity main XML file. It's a Boolean method that returns the value true. A note about the details of classes and methods we'll use in the apps we develop. Whenever you'd like more information about what they do, check the documentation available in the same manner we looked at the activity class. When you develop your Android apps, you'll find that the time you spend delving into a class and its methods will depend on how much you need to know to use them and your curiosity about the details of what they do. Start the habit now of exploring Android documentation to the level that's appropriate for your needs and interests. So that's an overview of your first Android Java program. We'll continue in the next lesson with the layout files that describe the look and feel of the screen displayed by the program.